circum center. And what do you do? You construct perpendicular bisectors. So right, perpendicular bisectors. And the cent the circle is called circumscribed circle. And guess what? It is equidistant to. From what? All vertices. So I'm going to show you how to construct it using compass, but if I roughly just show you what it is, you know, when you open your compass more than half, you get draw arc like this, and this becomes a perpendicular bisector. If you do another one like this, if I were to just do it roughly, you might look something like this, okay? And it's obvious it's not equidistant from all three sides, you see. But now what you do is open your compass from this center, circumcenter to the vertices, and then you draw a circle around it. It goes around all three vertices, meaning this point is equidistant from all three vertices. So again, there could be a question like, there's a town a, B, C, and they want to build a new school. Where should we construct a new school from three points? Then you have to construct what? Circumcenter by perpendicular bisectors. Mm -hmm. to, you, and you can draw the circumscribed circle to check if it's all touching the vertices. And it will be all equidistant from the vertices. Do you guys see the difference between in center and circumcenter? Okay. So now let's go ahead and Construct this. So what do you do to construct a perpendicular bisector? From one point, I'll start from A, you're, you have to open your compass, what? More than halfway, remember? And you have to have X and Y intersection top and bottom. So you can do one like this, right? And you keep the same width and draw the arc like that. So how do you construct a perpendicular bisector now? It is from here, this intersection to this intersection. You see how it cut this in half and this is 90 perpendicular bisector. You have to do the same thing on the other two sides. So now, if you want to, and if it's more than half A, you can keep the same width, but it looks like it's almost half, so make it wider. And you keep the same width and draw the arc from other side. So now my perpendicular bisector is from here to there. And one more. So here, I guess I could use the same length. It's more than half, I believe, from here. It was pretty narrow, but you still see where they intersect. So it's from here to there. You see how all three perpendicular bisector went through the same point, concurrent. So this is what? This is called circumcenter. And now, how can we draw the circle? Guys, stop for a second and watch me do this. From the circumcenter, you put your compass at, at one vertex. But don't draw it yet. Double check before you draw. You see how it's going through it a little short so we can make it maybe a little wider. Let's see how it goes on the other side. You see how it is touching? Is it good? Good? Then you go around and draw a circle. You see? That circle is called 
circumscribed circle. It's outside the triangle. I'm sure you guys will remember this tonight because you guys learned it today. But, you know, when the progress check comes, you might forget what to do. The way how I remember this is I in center goes with what? A. I A. I am. I A. And C goes with P. C P, College Park. Okay. A goes with I. C goes with P. The circumcenter, you see how it's a Q triangle? Guys, if it's a Q triangle, where is the circumcenter? Inside the triangle. Do you guys see it? If you have an obtuse triangle, when you construct a perpendicular bisector, where is the circumcenter? Outside the triangle. Do you guys see it? If it's the right triangle, where would the... No. If it's the right triangle, then the perpendicular bisector would intersect on the triangle. Do you see it? The circumcenter will be on it. If it's a right triangle of twos, it will be outside. Acute, it will be inside. 